friends, I'm at Woodlawn Cemetery. This is where the mausoleum part is. And it is locked. So I must have been at the back door. This is the grave of George Jones, friends. 1911 to 1995. George Jones right here. The possum. And I wish it said something like that on here, but maybe they don't allow it. But this is where he's at. If you go in this mausoleum, he's in the far right rear corner. And this is what it looks like inside of the areas. They have those, and they should slip the coffin right up in there. George Jones right there, friends. And that's Ruby. I'm not sure who Ruby is. Maybe well, it can't be his mom. Sister? We'll see. All right, friends. So the grave that I just showed you that said George Jones was, in fact, George Jones, but not the George Jones. I am now going to take you to the George Jones. And you see it says right there, he stopped loving her today. It's the Garden of the Grand Tour. So stay tuned, friends. Here we go. So see, step right up and come on in. And they've got the George Jones guest book inside the funeral home. So you can actually go in there and sign a guest book saying that you've been here. This is the possum right here, friends. And I thought the other grave was a little bit basic to be somebody so famous. And it says he stopped loving her today right there. George Glenn Jones was a king of broken hearts. He sang of life's hardships and struggles in a way that somehow lightened our own. His voice was effortless and unforgettable. He brought unsurpassed emotional eloquence to every song he sang. He was and is the soul of country music. No one will ever fill his shoes. He is at rest, but his music is alive and ageless. He gifted it to all of us, to the joyful and broken. Let me see what else it says down here. And he's saying, walk through this world, walk through this world with me. He sang, and we do. The possum, friends. It's a very nice setup here, very cool fitting for someone who did all the things that George did. He said I love you till I die. He stopped loving her today. They placed a reef upon his door. And soon they'll carry him away. He stopped loving her today. Just a little bit for you there, friends. <laughs> and he was a Marine as well. So there it is, friends. George Jones, the possum. And Tammy Wynette is in that mausoleum right there. I'm going to show you her shortly. Stay tuned. And right in front of George Jones, friends, is Johnny Paycheck. None other than Johnny Paycheck. Died in 2003. There's George right there. There's Johnny right there. And people have left him Coors beer bottles right here on the gray. An honest day's work might take days. Johnny Paycheck, friends, right there. George Jones right there, just that close together. So I'm going to uh, go look at these other graves. I'm going to show you a couple of more. There's another one in here I'm going to go look for real quick before the sun goes down, and then we'll get to the ones inside the mausoleum. Stay tuned, friends. Have the gray ghost with me. We're going to go hunting. So I'm inside the one that they call the cross mausoleum. And I'll show you in a moment why they call it the cross mausoleum.
friends were looking for two famous people down this hall. So here's one I didn't know I was going to find, little Jimmy Dickens. He died January 2nd, 2015. His wife is still living. They were married in 1971. Here's a little cowboy statue. Reba Rambo. They called her Dottie. She is right here next to him. So who knew? There's Jim Ed Brown up there. Bunch of them. The ladies seem to outlive the men every time. This is something I've never seen before. They put them in urns in these kind of like bookcases and they put mementos in there with them. Hmm. Never seen that. J.D. Sumner here, friends. J.D. Sumner and the Stamps Quartet backed up Elvis. JD is buried right here. A good friend of mine was one of the pallbearers, Bob Crawford. Knew JD very well. Also knew Jerry Reed. Lynn Anderson right here, died in July 2015. Tammy Rwindet right there, friends. Died in 1998. Very young woman when she passed. Her daughter still lives in Hendersonville, where I live. Gordon Stoker right here, friends. Gospel music singer. Wife still alive. Little Jimmy's Hall, right there. Otis Blackwell seems famous to me. It's say in 1932 to 2002. That's senior, that's junior down here. He passed also. So friends, I'm going to stop right here. I'm not going to move one ounce further until I pay an ode to Otis Blackwell. I knew there was a reason why that name sounded familiar to me, and the name should sound familiar to you, but I bet you, you don't know who he is. He wrote All Shook Up for Elvis, Don't Be Cruel, Fever, Return to Cinder, One Broken Heart for Sale. He wrote Great Balls of Fire and Breathless for Jerry Lee Lewis. Also, Let's Talk About Us. Hey Little Girl for D. Clark, Handyman for J Dale Shannon and James Taylor. Wow, what a songwriter he was. So a very unassuming grave right here, friends, for someone that was an amazing, amazing musician, guitar player. Um, it says Jerry R., you see the R., Hubbard. If you did not know this, you would not know that that is Jerry Reed, friends. Amos Moses, Jerry Reed. Smokey and the Bandit, Jerry Reed. Right there. I wish they would have done a better job of, of showing who this is so people could pay their respects. But it is what it is, friends. That is Jerry Reed right there. Passed in 2008. Jerry Reed, friends. If you want to pay your respects, you come in that staircase right there. Come down to the first hall. He's right there. Tammy Wynette is right there. Little Jimmy Dickens is a little further down on the right-hand side. So, friends, I wanted to use the glory to illustrate to you where George Jones is as opposed to Tammy Wynette. So, that's George's grave. Now, we're going to fly straight over to the mausoleum. And in this... Uh, part of the video you really can't tell that this white building which is a four-story mausoleum is cross-shaped so as i get higher and higher and higher you'll be able to see that it is in fact shaped like a cross if you look to the right you'll see nashville out in the distance we just passed it but i'll get back to it again i'll show you again but you see it's cross-shaped and the graves that i just showed you are all on the third floor on the right hand side so if you went through this back door right here where this circle drive is and went to the right, they're on that right hall. And I'm gonna pan around so you can see downtown Nashville. That is in fact downtown Nashville right there. They're that close to downtown. And then I'm gonna pan down. Uh, that's the back door that I'm talking about going in. It is open up till five o'clock. If after five, you have to go through the front if there's somebody there. But I'm also gonna show you Dobie Gray's grave and a, another couple of things that are there and even a trombone player 
in the tunnel as I'm leaving. Tunnel is on Thompson Lane heading back towards my house from this graveyard. So right here, we're in everlasting life, friends. This is in the back of Woodlawn. This is, if you go in and go to the far, far left, you can see the top of that building, which is uh, the Alien Bees guy, last name Buff. That's where his business is. And Alien Bees is for, um, is camera equipment. And he manufactures that, Paul C. Buff is right there. So we're gonna walk out into here. From here, I'm gonna say that it is that one right there. So let's walk back and look. It's an unusual shape one. I can see it from here. It's shaped different than everyone else out here. And there it is, friends. Dobie Gray. Real name was Lawrence Brown. Died in 2011. And if you don't recognize the name, he is the guy that sang Drift Away. I want to get lost in you rock and roll and drift away. It says, beloved son, brother, uncle, and friend to your loving family and to all the friends and fans you have touched, both in your personal life and around the world, your love, legacy, and music will live on in our hearts forever. Want to get lost in your rock and roll and drift away? We love you, Dobie. I want to get lost in your rock and roll and drift away. Yeah, give me the peace, Lord, and see my soul. I want to get lost in your rock and roll and drift away. That's Dobie Gray right there, friends. Sang that song. I'm sure you recognize it now. So now you know, friends. Oh, one more thing. How you find this is, you see right here, you see this big tree right here. There's a little tree right there. There's a little empty space. You can see the gray ghost. The gray ghost won't be here. But if you come to the very far left corner, that's the, the main part of the, um, of the funeral home where the, the big mausoleum is. It's shaped like a cross. If you go to the very far left, come right around here and park. You walk to the left of this big tree right here, the second one, and he's about six, seven graves over. Right there, friends. And there's Jesus right there as well. This is an interesting little area down here. Of course, you can see the, the ducks are asleep. They're just hanging out. But there's little fish, little goldfish in there, koi. What all this is about. There's a plaque here. That looks like a jail right there. Domestic quarters usually occupied by family servants, sometimes used as Sumner, summer cookhouse and nursery, fired upon by federal troops from passing train, bullet narrowly missing head of sleeping child. So this was here during the Civil War. I guess people lived there. They had an alarm permit on it. Little bridge is washed out. But this could be, yeah, this is like a spring. It's not a jail. And you can hear the natural spring flowing in there. This is a hospital water source. Because of the generous pure water supply available from this spring, this area surrounded Surrounding it was selected as a hospital site for treatment of soldiers wounded in the Battle of Nashville Which took place during the war between the states. So this is all Civil War related Things I had no idea this was in here A Carper homestead William Washington and Susie Black Carper known to be the oldest houses remaining from the early American era, originally located on Cane Ridge Road in Antioch, Tennessee. The materials were removed piece by piece and rebuilt exactly as it stood when occupied by the Carper generations, donated to the Woodlawn Memorial Park for historic preservation by the children of William Washington and Susie Black Carper, 1969. So these things were not originally here, they were moved here and completely rebuilt. That's very interesting. Hmm. Log cabins, friends. 
interesting little spot. Nice shaded area. But that looks like somebody lives in there. Like I say, there's alarms. You can see an air conditioner. So somebody could, could literally live there. Maybe a caretaker. So I think maybe we've got a mixture of two things. We've got these houses that were brought here. And then you've got the natural spring. One has nothing really to do with the other other than they're in the same spot. So if you want to see this, if you come to Nashville, Dobie Gray is buried back over there. But this is in the far left corner in the very back. So Dobie is all the way in the far left over there. This is far left. But when you see that brown building right there, you turn and come down here. So this is right at the back edge. In the very back, you can see that that's the back of uh, some, some um, commercial buildings. So friends, on Thompson Lane, there's a, a tunnel. It's right up here on the right. And when I came through it a minute ago, I saw a guy playing a trombone under the tunnel. I guess it sounds really good under there. That's, that's pretty darn cool. <laughs> you don't see that every day, friends. And look, tighten up every chance you get. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.